Good morning and welcome to the First Baptist Church of Tarentum, Pennsylvania's Thought for the Day. I promise you I look forward to coming and giving this brief, brief message each and every Saturday morning. It just encourages me as we look to begin a new week and to move forward and, and just to, to be a, a little closer to God. I just, I thank God for it. You all have to excuse me that I'm always excited, um, but I just am because there is nothing like God's word. I mean, certainly he shares with us his word and it encourages us in life and living. Um, I just praise God that the messages that come through his word are so relevant, even right up until this very moment. I praise God for that. So, you know, you all know that we have been walking through the Exodus. Yes, the actual book of Exodus, but also the Exodus of the children of Israel from uh, that land of Egypt in which they were bound. And so now we have been talking a lot about Moses, the challenges he faced, the, the things that he went through. And we even had last week reached a point of talking about God uh, putting the right people in the path and him providing Aaron so that indeed Moses would have um, that help, that assistance that he needed to be able to carry out what God had instructed him to do. But I do want to take just a little bit of a step back on this morning because as I was rereading the scripture and praying and beginning to prepare this quick message, something stood out to me and I just felt like it's a blessing to me. And if it was blessing me, I'm sure it will bless some of you out there. My prayer is that it'll bless all of you, but it just depends on where you are in life. For those that this message does not apply to right here and right now, I just pray that you would put this message on the shelf and that you would have it, that you would never uh, be without it, that you'll be able to draw back on it during those times of hardship. And so let's go back. Uh, we're going to be looking this morning at Exodus, the fourth chapter, verses 21 and 22. That's Exodus 4, 21 and 22. And it reads, And the Lord said to Moses, When you go back to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders that I have put in your power. But I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my first son. I said to you, let my son go that he may worship me, but you refuse to let him go. Now I will kill your firstborn. Amen for the reading and hearing of God's word. So the reason I wanted to take a step back is because as you all know, um, last week, I believe that this week we should have actually been at a place where Moses in, in front, is in front of Pharaoh. And we're beginning to receive uh, just these thoughts for the day uh, from Moses' experience as he stood before Pharaoh. And what I praise God for is that there's always next week, God willing, and as the old people used to say, and the sun shines. I, I just praise God that on next week, we will certainly continue to march through uh, this book of Exodus. But as we take this step back, uh, just as a quick reminder, uh, God calls us. He calls each and every one of us to do something. And I want to people to just stop saying that they don't know what their call is. Whatever you're passionate about is what God has called you to do. Just do it and do it for the body of Christ. Yes, it's perfectly acceptable to do it, to bring a profit to um, us as individuals. I mean, all of us want to be prosperous. God's word promised us that we would be prosperous, but we should also be doing it for the body of Christ. Yes, we should be doing it for the body of Christ. 
And that once we're called, God will absolutely tell us what to do. He will give us direction about where to go, when to go, how to go, and exactly what we are to do when we reach that destination. And I think that we've seen that through all of these lessons, that God is speaking to Moses and he's actually telling him exactly what to do when he gets back in front of Pharaoh. So he'll call us, he'll tell us what to do, um, he'll tell us where we need to go. Um, and then, and then, which has been something that has really uh, been an inspiration to me personally, he will equip us. He will equip us to do what it is that he has called us to do. No more excuses of why we can't do it because indeed God knows who we are. Yeah. And he will equip us to be able to do what it is he desires and has called us to do. Now, once we accept the call, once we accept what he's told us to do, once we've accept, accepted where he has told us to go, and once we trust that he has equipped us, then we need to go. So here we are, we are on our way uh, to do what God has called us to do and we fall into or come across all kinds of adversities, all kinds of challenges, things that block our way and try to prevent us from actually carrying out what God told us to do. Hey, we are not the first people to experience this. Moses experienced it too. And we need to recognize that opposition will come. There is no way that the devil is going to allow us to go out and do God's will and not challenge us. Of course, he's going to challenge us and he will send things that he is so determined will stop us and stop our progress. But what we need to understand is that indeed God knows that Satan is going to come up against us. He knows that we're going to run into this problem or that. And absolutely none of this is a surprise to God. Can I just encourage each and every one of you this morning as I encourage myself? This is not a surprise to God. Nothing that we're facing, nothing that we're going through, no challenges that are coming up in our lives are a surprise to God. He absolutely is and will always continue to be aware of the challenges that life is going to throw at us. And especially when we're trying to do what it is he has called us to do. I speak from personal experience with that. And no matter what happens in my life, no matter what is going on around me, I am determined to keep working for Christ, to keep working for God, because no matter what, no matter what is thrown at me, I am determined to be able to come out of it and stand and say, and even in the midst of it, I still did God's work. I, you know, and this is a side note and a side message. I didn't plan for this this morning. I will say that even though while I'm doing what I'm doing for God, that I am sometimes distracted or, you know, sometimes doing it with a heavy heart, but I promise you, I promise God, I am going to continue to do whatever it is God has for me to do. So amen for that. And I praise God for it. And my prayer is that each and every one of us will have that same testimony. I know all of us are perhaps at a different place spiritually, or um, some of us handle adversity uh, better than others. I, I tell you, we all are on an equal playing field when it comes to hurt and pain, and we just need to trust God. So that's my side message for this morning.
So those of you who actually clicked and got a chance to hear the message, you're getting a bonus message because it won't show up um, in the box where I put the title uh, of this thought for the day. So that being said, let me give you the thought for the day because you know it's easily been 10 minutes and I have to let you go. Our thought for the day and to carry us through next week is he knows the obstacles we will face. Amen. He knows the obstacles we will face. He said in this scripture text, Pharaoh is going to harden his heart. He already knew. Let me get it right. Let me get it right. But I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. So God knew. He knew what was going to happen with Pharaoh. And he told Moses, you're going to have a hard time. And Pharaoh is not going to cooperate with what it is you're supposed to be doing in me. What I've called you to do. But nevertheless, he is still sending Moses out to Pharaoh. Ladies and gentlemen, he's still sending us. He's still telling us to get out here and do what he has called us to do, no matter what, because he knows the obstacles we will face. I got to let you go. I thank you for these moments. Uh, I thank you for your attention. And most importantly, I thank God for his divine and holy word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you on this morning, Lord, just thanking you, thanking you for just another opportunity. We can't thank you enough. We don't take it for granted that you allowed us to live, to see this day, to be in the midst of these, your people, to come together, to hear this word. We don't take any of that for granted. And then Heavenly Father, our prayer is that this word would penetrate our hearts and our minds, that it would become even a bigger part of who we are. That Heavenly Father, this thought for the day would stick, that it would stick with us as we endeavor to do what it is we've been called to do. Our prayer, Heavenly Father, is that we would never, ever forget that you do know the obstacles that we will face, that none of this that's going on in our lives is a surprise to you, that you absolutely was fully aware when you sent us of what we would face. And I just praise God. I praise God. We praise God that there are no surprises for you. In your name, Jesus, we do. We do offer these and all other prayers. Amen, amen, and amen.